Welcome to the Municipal Voice. Joining us today is Len Fasano, State Senator and Leader of the Senate Republican Caucus. The Municipal Voice is the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities podcast in collaboration with WNHH LP 103.5 FM. I'm your host, Matt Ford. As always, be sure to give us a like and let us know what you're thinking in the comments below. CCM's Municipal Voice podcast continues to present a key forum on important state local issues. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the consensus views of our CCM or our member municipal leaders. Thank you for being here, Senator Fasano. Matt, thanks for having me. <laughs> First off, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what uh, region you represent, and what your role is in the Senate and your party? Sure. Uh, I'm a Republican, and uh, I represent North Haven, Wallingford, East Haven, and part of Durham. And so, uh, I've local been in to the legis area. legislature since 2002. I was elected. Mm -hmm. I am the Senate Minority Leader of the Republican State Senate. And... Um, I, I've enjoyed that role for five years or mm -hmm. six years now. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of time, but I enjoy it a lot. What do you do before your time in uh, the legislature? Well, I still am practicing law in New Haven. Okay. I'm a New Haven born and raised kid. Oh, there you go. All right. Yep. Uh, so I practice law in New Haven. I also run a couple businesses. I uh, have a beach club out okay. in East Haven known as Silver Sands Beach and Tennis Club. That's one so of the best you got beaches. a lot of free time is what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so yeah, a lot yeah. of free time. Yeah. And three kids and two grandkids. Oh, so. wow. Yeah, just really taking it easy. Um, in uh, CCM's, this report is different that we did a few years back. Uh, we advocated for cost containment, which I know is something that you also feel pretty strongly about. Um, where do you think the state could be more cost effective and efficient? Well, actually, you know, I think there are a lot of areas. I think one area that slips through our net are what we call quasis. These are... Okay. Uh, entities that we create by statute that mm -hmm. are independent to some extent. We give them birth, mm -hmm. we give them a role, yep. and we set them out. So is and, this like water authorities or COGS? Yeah, which, well, okay. it would be like uh, the Hartford uh, MDC Metropolitan mm -hmm. District Water Authority, gotcha. the Port Authority, which hearing is going on mm -hmm. right there's now. Some, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Yep. Uh, it, the lottery is another one. Okay. And when you look at these you'll find that I think they were created with good intentions mm -hmm. of the legislature and a goal. But what they've done is they've morphed into entities that no longer look like they were supposed to. Their mm -hmm. salaries are outrageous. Um, and they all know each other. You know, once yeah. they get going, uh, they change very few people. Mm -hmm. And then each one gives each other a salary uh, a, a kind increase. Of a, a club. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And then you see these contracts and then they hire a, they don't use the uh, attorney mm -hmm. general's office. They hire their own separate counsel. Mm -hmm. So that's a cost. So these things are coming uh, very, very expensive to do, mm -hmm. with no oversight. I've been screaming about these things for years. I mm -hmm. will say Governor Lamont uh, is going to, we're working with Governor Lamont to propose mm -hmm. legislation next session in February okay. that's going to start to get control. So that's, that's one commonality you found where you, you can work together? Yeah, I, I think, yeah. and I think that that's a big portion. I mean, I mm -hmm. think don't forget that includes uh, pension benefits, mm -hmm. healthcare benefits. So there's a lot uh, that can be trimmed from that. N number two, I think that we need to do some sort. It's not unusual for businesses mm -hmm. to hire a company to come in and look at the, how that business runs mm -hmm. administratively, process. And I think it would be healthy for us to do that. At DOT, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it would be helpful uh, for us to do that DSS, DMV, all these agencies yeah. that I hear from constituents mm -hmm. just take too long. I mean, DMV is crazy to try to register a vehicle with DMV. Yeah. Everyone, no one wants to go to the DMV Nobody, office. And, they can and help that it. shouldn't yeah. be that way. And yeah. the reason why it is, there's no competitor. Yeah. It's not like if you don't go to DMV, you don't get your mm -hmm. car registered. So I think that, you know, we need to... Uh, uh, look into that. When you want help from DSS, Department of mm -hmm. Social Services, a reason why you should be on mm -hmm. hold, on hold for yeah. two and a half hours, on hold. Just on the phone. Just on the phone, waiting for someone to help you on a file. Yeah. People don't have that kind of time. Government, particularly with social services, mm -hmm. should be able to react a lot faster. And I think a lot of that it goes to trying to scale down our mm -hmm. government trying to use the technology to a large extent that we yeah. don't use. Um, and I think that that would also 
cut costs. In my yeah. view. You mentioned a little bit of the private sector there. Do you see finding those efficiencies as something that those departments could do themselves, or do you see maybe someone outside coming and looking at the whole thing and being like, here's our recommendations for how you can make this work? It's got to be outside. I don't think government you think could the ever people do that enough. are within are already too entrenched in the way things that's right are are, are have always been done as as people like say that's, that's it, the way we always did it. it so that's not necessarily it, the best that's way. the comment yeah. and look we've always done it this way why rock the boat look at some fresh um, eyes in there or something as i say i'm a lawyer and i went to housing yeah. court yesterday and with all due respect to the housing court and it's not the judge's fault mm -hmm. you know i was there for three hours just to do a simple motion yeah well, you know, we got to be able to go a little bit better than that. And there are people there who, uh, now I'm being paid to be there, mm -hmm. but there are folks there who are tenants or maybe having issues with their landlord yeah. who got to take a day off from work to sit there for three or four hours. Yeah, It's just not right. There are actually no advances in the technology over the years to make this process just go kind of still using outdated methods, just systems. Yes. Yeah. And I think we need to look at all that. And that's part of cost containment because yeah. the more we can allow people to do online filings, mm -hmm. the more we can allow um, uh, the, the technology to take a uh, place of routine uh, administrative filings. Yeah. I think the less we need um, people on the phones or uh, the less paperwork that mm -hmm. it's got to be mailed. Why can't stuff be emailed? I just yeah. don't get all that. In, in, a, in a world where Amazon can deliver anything to your door the next day, why why should the DMV or other services be this right. cumbersome? And, and no yeah. one looks to make those more efficient <clears throat> and therefore less costly mm -hmm. because there's no competition. Amazon is, you know, now you have Walmart doing the yeah. same thing, you got Target doing the same thing. Uh, so everyone's fighting for that dollar and that, that yeah. speed. Government's like, well, where are you going to go? Yeah. Yeah, for a little while with the the uh, licenses and stuff, I would actually go to AAA instead of to the DMV because it Correct. was better. Absolutely, yeah. and a lot of people can. So, but there's things you can't do at AAA that mm -hmm. they haven't relinquished. Like for instance, when you buy a new car or a used yeah. car, why can't the car dealership register your car? Mm -hmm. What we do is we make the car dealership write out all the information for the registration. Yeah. Go down to the DMV, uh, wait in line. Mm -hmm. Then the person takes the information that the car dealership has, yeah. types it into their system, and then you get your registration, whatever. Yeah, I imagine some of these dealers later. probably have someone whose entire job it is is to go sit in the DMV all they day do. with a bunch of papers. Yeah. You want to hear something funny? You know what, you know what happens to DMV? They actually made a cottage industry. Their people go down to DMV in the morning, mm -hmm. wait in line, get a number, and then sell that number. <laughs> to a person who comes in later, and then they get back in line and get a new number. Wow, I'm in the wrong business. Yes. Um, some other ways that we at CCM have advocated to help uh, contain costs is uh, shared services. And I know that uh, one of your towns is in a regional school district. Uh, do you see room for more regional school districts or the sharing of like back office kind of functions at, uh, between towns and boards of ed? So there are no statutes that prohibit towns from mm -hmm. doing shared services. So if they want to go and make deals, um, <laughs> excuse me, I know that I was at this uh, uh, thing in North Haven where they had uh, SWAT and other type of uh, equipment there, and I was mm -hmm. talking to them. And, you know, the towns get together and say, look, you'll buy this type of truck and we'll buy that yeah. type of truck, and then we could. So there's a lot of shared services that go on. Um School districts are a little bit more uh, of a tougher question. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, look, there's shared services. We probably could share police and fire, but yeah. who's going to be the politician to say, I'm going to get rid of my firehouse on Main Street, yeah. uh, name and town, uh, because there's one in East Haven, Next town very over, close. Yeah. And it'll be like, oh, there goes Fasano getting rid of our fire trucks, yeah. a safety issue. So it's a real tough political they talk about it yeah and that's where the money yeah, is saved, the, the numbers is always look really good but the political realities in the ground can be challenging. they just don't match up and yeah. it's very difficult to get it done but i think shared services is the way of going yeah uh, i think with the depletion uh the dropping of population of kids mm -hmm. we should look at school districts starting to regionalize some yeah um, and but, also some of the, the budgeting things with the schools i know i've, I've heard uh local leaders talking about 
when the population of the school shrinks, they're not allowed to shrink the budget, and that sometimes is a problem. Right. We tr- there's a minimum budget standard that you have yeah. to have, and for we pass some legislation that allows some towns to decrease if their population goes down by a certain percentage. Yeah. You can decrease your budget yeah. by a certain percentage. It doesn't apply, I think, to distressed municipalities, but mm-hmm. it applies to most others. That's good. I mean, obviously, we all want education funded, but if there's just right. less kids, you just need less money. That's right. Um, you recently uh, made a rebuttal to something that the governor had said about towns and cities uh, needing to manage their finances better. What is your take on withholding TAR grants and the state only paying a portion of pilot, which is uh, payment in lieu of taxes? Well, you know, government has uh, this way of always making promises mm-hmm. and never following through. Mm-hmm. Pilot is one of those promises. So when the governor says towns have to do better, mm-hmm. uh, I push back and say, well, uh, the town's budgets are lean for the most part. I mean, yeah. I, I can't speak about the cities, but I can talk about the towns. Their budgets, by uh, most uh, measures, mm-hmm. are extraordinarily lean. Um, and they do a lot with less. Yeah, uh, They've changed their, many of the towns and some cities, have changed their pensions to contribution versus defined benefit, mm-hmm. which is a huge money savings change. Yeah. So when the governor said way back when, you know, the towns you have to do better with less, it's yeah. like, well, what about you as the state government? Mm-hmm. Uh, you promise that you're going to pay 70% of yeah. pilot, and you're, yeah. you're paying 40% of pilot, 30% of some yeah. other pilot. So y- you make promises, towns rely upon them. Mm-hmm. You as a state, not necessarily Governor Lamont. And then the legislature pulls back on these promises. Uh, the sales tax went up uh, back under Governor Malloy. And mm-hmm. the reason why it went up was that some of that money was going to be diverted to towns. As soon as they had a bunch of problems, the Democratic yeah. majority who made that promise took away that promise. Mm-hmm. Now, people forgotten about it, unfortunately, but that was a promise that was made that raised the sales tax, I think it was 0.05%. Was that it would go towards pilot and stuff it would go directly to towns Mm -hmm. directly to them and then we didn't do it when they got into trouble they took it away so when governor lamont says that it bothers me because i think it's a lack of knowledge of what municipal budgets really do yeah so maybe part of his learning curve coming in as a new administration kind of getting ahead for how things learning curve i think the the governors go through particularly if you haven't served in any municipal or state capacity Mm -hmm. and i think he went through that learning curve last year and i think it it was a difficult time for the governor. I will mm-hmm. say that. I think he... It's really not an easy job for anybody. It's yeah. not an easy job. And if you yeah. don't know the building yeah. um, and how it works, it makes the job 10 times worse. Yeah. And I don't think he has... He has a few people now, but initially he did not have people in his administration who understood that building. Mm-hmm. If you're a legislator, you've been there four or five years, yeah. you could walk through the legislative office building, know exactly what bills are catching fire. What's going on where, yeah. Just by walking through and not Mm -hmm. talking to anybody. If other people were to walk through, they would say, all I hear is noise. I have no idea what they're talking about. And if you're going to stop something, you can't stop it after it's out of committee. you got to stop it or at least put some darts in it, if Mm -hmm. you would, at the legislative office building. Because if it makes its way with headwinds going into the Capitol, whether the governor likes it or not, that puppy has sailed. It's tough to stop it. So if he wants it to have an effect on things, he's got to get there early and see what, you know, read the lay of the land, as it were. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. if he doesn't like something, derail it, yeah. get it so that the votes, maybe it comes out, but it comes out with a lot of no votes, which yeah. red flags it for legislators. There's a problem with yeah. this bill. But if you say, if deals are cut, if you would, mm-hmm. where they say, hey, look, I don't really like your bill, but I know you don't like, but you vote for yeah. mine, I'll vote for yours. Let's just get out of committee. Well, the legs have already started on that. Yeah, work that out beforehand, and, and you're smooth sailing. Right. Um, in regards to property taxes, uh, which is always a key issue to CCM, uh, Connecticut has the third highest. Uh, do you believe that municipalities should be given alternative ways to raise funds, or do you agree with uh, fellow Senator Kathy Austin, who says that receiving funds like pilot from state should negate the need for raising funds elsewhere? Um, you know, Kathy Austin was a... Uh... Mayor first selectman, I forgot mm-hmm. what the title was for a while there, so she certainly knows this area. Um, yeah, she's served both both in the legislature and as a and right, and She's official. a state yeah. senator and she's yeah. chairman of appropriations. Yeah. And I would say, 
I would say municipal property taxes are a big issue. Yeah. I don't believe giving uh, municipalities the right to raise uh, taxes or other sources of Sales income taxes or whatever. Yeah. Would be, uh, is going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the problem lies with getting hold of your expenses. Mm-hmm. And I also think the problem lies with the state upholding their promises of pilots. Yeah. So I agree if they actually fully Kathy. fund pilot, then they wouldn't necessarily be clamoring for these other alternatives because they would be getting what they were exactly. told so they would So I do get. agree, yeah. Kathy. Otherwise, I don't think there's an end to that. I think yeah. it's it's like the state, you know, doing the income tax then solve our problem mm-hmm. because we continue, certainly the Democratic majority continues to yeah. spend more than what they take in. So that's really the problem. And I think giving another source of income is just leading to uh, a, a different direction. Yeah. So fix what's already in place first. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, in one of our last episodes, Garrett Sheehan is the president of the New Haven Chamber of Commerce. Uh, he said that Tweed was the key to unlocking the economic development potential for the greater New Haven area uh, and the state as a whole. Um, you've asked the attorney general to either appeal the second uh, circuit ruling or recuse himself from that decision. Um, can you tell us why you disagree with the Chamber of Commerce on Tweed? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, the attorney general um, conflict no longer exists because That's uh, settled. Okay. with the loss of Mayor Harp, mm-hmm. um, he was just too close to Mayor Harp because he supported ah, her. Okay, so that was the, the crux of that. Gotcha. Yes, he, he had, she had given him his nomination speech. Mm-hmm. He had went out and supported her. So obviously there was this political allegiance that I think was too close to, for him to make an objective Got it. finding. So the new administration kind of takes care of that I, I believe so. Yeah, okay. I believe so. Um, I, the, the thing about Tweed is this, um, what people may or may not know, is way back when when Mayor DiStefano was mayor, mm-hmm. uh, Tweed had a problem. And the problem was that the FAA told them that unless they got the emergency runway extension, mm-hmm. um, they would have to shut down certain flights and limit all sorts of yeah. stuff. So Marty Looney and I talked about it. Uh, mayor Capone was mayor of East Haven at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Lawler, who was rep, we all got together and said, we don't want this to happen to Tweed. Yeah. Uh, East Haven was against the extension of the runway, uh, even for emergency purposes. Mm-hmm. So we coddled a, uh, a, a contract mm-hmm. that uh, East Haven would drop all their lawsuits, yeah. uh, that they would extend the emergency runway, it would remain unpaved, Okay. Uh, and we codified that in statute, and New Haven was more than happy with mm-hmm. that. Everybody signed this agreement, and life went on, and they were yeah. saved. Then what New Haven did was go behind our backs, and uh, Looney, Senator Looney and myself mm-hmm. in particular, and uh, tried to uh, negate this deal in a court. Mm-hmm. And Marty and I took the position that this is uh, grossly unjust. You don't yeah. make a deal in good faith and then turn and around then try and try to kill yeah. the deal. And it lacks the good faith that you need. If you're going to expand that airport, mm-hmm. there's got to be a lot of trust. How can you trust the city of New Haven when they make a deal, people go out of their way to help them, being Senator Looney and myself and the mayors, particularly Mayor Capone at the time, mm-hmm. go out of their way to help them to make this happen take political heat for doing that. Yeah. Uh, and they promise they're not going to pave it. This is not about extension mm-hmm. runway. And as soon as they get what they want, all the lawsuits are dropped, turn around and say, we want to go back on the deal. We're going to run the court. Yeah. So our objection is, look, if you want to do that, show us what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Give us a master plan. Let us look at it. Tell us what your goals are five, 10 years down the yeah. road. And still, as I, sit here now, there has been no master plan given mm-hmm. to Senator Looney and myself, no map, no goals, no direction, no what, nothing with yeah. it, just we want to expand. That's it. Yeah. Well, that's not good enough for our constituents. A little bit more specific, yeah. You need to tell us what you're doing, why you're doing, how many flights, where they're coming in, what's the glide slope yeah. for takeoff, what's the glide slope for landing, uh, where's the main terminal going to be, mm-hmm. where's the traffic going to be, how many people are going to be in the waiting areas? There's, there's a whole lot of specifics. There's a whole lot of specifics. Thought of and they of just want us to say, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. And Senator Louie and I have made it clear for years. And once again, 
except for one meeting to this day. Yeah. Not one person from Tweed or from that planning division has come to us and said, let's sit down and have a conversation of where we want to go. I will also add, in February of 2019, mm-hmm. Governor Lamont had a meeting. Senator Looney, myself, Representative Al Paolillo, good guy, was yep. there, sat down, and um, we said we haven't seen a plan. And the governor said, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I'm going to get you a plan. You'll mm-hmm. have it in a couple weeks. I still don't have a plan today. There are hearings going on, yeah. as I understand it, next week or next month or something. Mm-hmm. And over what? Just to have people come out and say they like tweed, they don't they like don't. Yeah. What do they even have a hearing about? So there's a lot there. That's mm-hmm. that's number one. Number two is, is tweed the right place? Look, I know yeah. Yale wants it. For whatever reason, yeah. Yale Hospital wants it. For mm-hmm. whatever reason, I would argue if Yale really wants it, that maybe Yale should help out New Haven mm-hmm. and give some money to New Haven if they really want it. Are there a few businesses around? But there's not like a multitude of businesses. I was the attorney for mm-hmm. the East Haven Economic Development Park back in the day. Yep. And the idea of East Haven Development Park was – it was near Tweed. Mm-hmm. We'd be able to get businesses to use that airport. There are one or two businesses who use it. That's it out of mm-hmm. maybe 40, 50 parcels. I forgot how yeah. many. So it, I don't see it on that side. I see Yale pushing hard and mm-hmm. the hospital pushing hard. Well, help New Haven and fund it. Don't yeah. leave it just on New Haven's shoulders. So that that's case number one. Yeah. Then you have to offset that or compare it to Sikorsky or, or mm-hmm. Stratford. Right down the road, Sikorsky, with, as a possible alternative to expanding tweet. Correct. Yeah. The argument there is you're going to probably move folks from Fairfield who will probably go to mm-hmm. the Stratford Airport as opposed to White Plains that cannot grow any bigger uh, or to uh, Tweed or LaGuardia mm-hmm. or drive all the way up to Hartford. So it seems like that center would have more of a growth yeah. potential kind of and between more the Fairfield County kind of hub and the New Haven, Greater New Haven kind of, kind of right in between in a lot of ways. Yeah. And you're 25 minutes from New Haven from there. Yeah. So where it should go, I think yeah. we should do a study mm-hmm. to look at the economics of both places. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if it says Tweed, then we have to look further down that road. If it says Sikorsky, then we got to look further. Sikorsky just keep saying it that way. But Stratford, yeah. then we look further down that road. Uh, I know that um, Dave Steverman, when he ran for governor, mm-hmm. uh, looked at that scenario yeah. and I think didn't finally conclude but came to a understanding that perhaps Stratford was a better locale for a bunch yeah. of reasons. Is there more room there, is it, et cetera? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. I really don't know. I do know the other thing they could tie in is the trains. Yeah. Uh, the train station is very close to the airport, so that they felt that there was this train Jesus, access that didn't, d- yeah, okay. that, that that didn't exist. <clears throat> to Tweed, you have to be in New Haven and then cross the bridge. I guess you could go to the train station in Brantford, I guess. Mm-hmm. But the one uh, down in Stratford was more of the New York route, if you yeah. would. You could get on and be in New York City yeah. more, more quickly. That's my understanding. Well, let me let everyone at home know that you are listening to WNHH LP 103.5 FM, broadcasting live from downtown New Haven. We are streaming live on TuneIn Radio and NewHavenIndependent.org. We are also streaming live video on Facebook Live. Just go to Facebook.com slash NewHavenIndependent or go to your Facebook page and look us up. Um, so another question that is on a lot of people's minds in Connecticut, tolls. What's happening there? Oh, boy. There's the issue. Yeah, the... right? Right. Get people fired up on that one. Exactly. So... Uh, tolls mm-hmm. is a big issue. So let's start with the Republicans have put out a toll plan. Yeah. And the toll plan, I should say transportation plan, mm-hmm. a lack of tolls. Right. So um, you're, you're against tolls? I'm against tolls. Okay. Um, because I don't think the revenue is going to be uh, performed the way, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. Governor Lamont's plan on tolls mm-hmm. demonstrates that uh, after 2030, his plan goes into a negative. Okay. That is to say, we have the general fund, 
Mm -hmm. And then we have the transportation fund. The transportation okay. fund is funded with um, your, your gasoline tax or mm -hmm. the petroleum tax. From that, we have expenditures, and then we borrow transportation bonds, and we pay the principal and interest out of the transportation fund for those transportation okay. bonds. And what's happening is the expenses of the transportation fund are rising. Mm -hmm. The um, fuel income is not rising as quickly, so we have to find another source. What Governor Lamont has proposed are tolls. Mm -hmm. The problem with his toll plan is uh, when he wanted to do cars mm -hmm. is it doesn't help out the transportation fund yeah. in 15 years from now. So you're going to have a problem, which means you're going to have to increase cars. So bipartisanly, that plan was rejected. Yeah, like the, the latest was talking about just trucks or something like that? Now he's talking about just trucks. Okay. Uh, in uh, 14 or 15 locations. The problem with that is I don't think any, anybody believes it's ever going to just be trucks. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to add cars, number one. Number two is the transportation fund still goes sour uh, mm -hmm. 15 years from now, 16, yeah. actually 12 years from now. So that means you're either going to have to up the rate on trucks, mm -hmm. which are already at the maximum rate when compared to New York, or you're going to have to add cars. And I think they're going to add cars. So it's a big trust factor there. Yeah. I know it related. Was it related to that? that there was some talk of adding it as like a provision to the state constitution or something like that. So Marty said he wanted to put in a provision in the constitution that prohibits us from ever tolling cars. Okay. And I would argue that's not what the constitution should be used for. I mean, if you're going to do it for that, does that mean any law that we pass now we have to do a constitutional yeah. amendment? To make sure no so legislature kind of unnecessarily pulling out the big guns on something that yeah, doesn't it, need to go, rise to that level, right? And the okay. Constitution are broad concepts. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you say you're not going to tow cars forever, yeah. then what if you say I'm not going to charge any petroleum tax? There's not going to be a gasoline tax. Yeah, uh, but we're going to have tolls for cars. Maybe that would entice other people to vote for it. Yeah. So you'd have to change the Constitution. Who knows what? our roads are going to look like 50 years from now. If cars so, will be running on gas. Or, yeah. Right. So it's kind of, you know, I don't think you use the Constitution for that. But what it shows is they understand that the car toll issue is a very sensitive it's a, it's a, issue. Yeah, people, about there, right? people are getting really worked up about it. So I don't think that's the way you want to do it. Uh, our plan takes, we have $2.7 billion in a rainy day fund mm -hmm. as of coming up on the 2020 mark. Mm -hmm. We take 1.5 of that, and we pay down pension liability, which then gives mm -hmm. us a better cash flow. It's like taking your savings account that you're earning a half a percent on yeah. and paying down on your 23% credit card, and then you get monthly payments. Yeah. You use that to fund your transportation. No tolls, mm -hmm. no new taxes, funds it for at least the next 20 years, yeah. if not longer. Uh, we could do all the infrastructure up to $18 billion, a little bit over 18 mm -hmm. billion, frankly, and you get to your end game. Yeah. So why do you need tolls? And the answer is because they really, their focus isn't on trucks. Mm -hmm. Their focus either either is they need to have tolls to have more income, or it's to get cars. Yeah. And I just can't see myself voting for that. Um, now, there's some economists right now predicting a recession looming in the near future. Would touching the rainy day fund? Uh, for transportation projects, put the state in a worse position to weather the storm if that does happen, uh, so to speak, if there's an de economic downturn? And the answer is no. But I will tell you this, under Governor Lamont's toll plan for mm -hmm. trucks, he admits that if he goes into recession, or his, folk, his uh, people in his administration admit, they, they're they trying to take out $250 million a year mm -hmm. over four years. So if From the rainy day fund. For the transportation plan. Yeah. So if there is a recession, they're not going to be able to do the transportation plan. Mm -hmm. So the tra so a recession will stop their transportation plan. Mm -hmm. A recession on our side does not stop the transportation plan. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we have to worry about is the general fund. Yeah. Number one, we got $1.2 billion, still the historic amount in our rainy day mm -hmm. fund. Number two is we could protect against a recession coming. If you looked at our rainy day fund for mm -hmm. the past five or six years, other than 2010, and I'll explain yep. that in a second, the most we've ever taken out of a rainy day fund 
has been about two hundred million. Out Most, of a total of out of our rainy day fund to help our budget. How, how big is the fund in general? I'm sorry. How how big is the the total fund? Like when you take out two hundred fifty million, like how how well, we'd have one point two billion dollars. Okay, and we would take out the most we've ever taken out at any time was two hundred million. Okay, now we did exceed that in two thousand and ten. Mm -hmm. We took out one point one billion dollars. That's a big number. What was that for? Well, the two thousand and eight recession hit, mm -hmm. and look, I say it like it is, and it is what it is. The 2008 recession hit. Republicans said, we're in a recession. Mm -hmm. We got to change our budget. Yeah. The Democratic majority said, you're panicking. It hasn't touched our budget yet. Let's wait. Mm -hmm. In 2009, we said, the recession is getting all over this country. Yeah. It's coming. They said, no, we're not going to change. The Democratic majority said, we're not going to change our budget. We ended up going into a deficit. Mm-hmm. More than anyone even thought, even us. Yeah. And because they never prepared for the deficit, they got hit with a huge budget deficit mm -hmm. for that year and going into the next year. So they had to draw on the rainy day fund. The point being, and they did it for this reason, Governor Rell was on the out. Yeah. She was a lame duck. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't saying, don't touch a rainy day fund, mm -hmm. we got to do things. She just let it go. Kind of hands off at that point. Yeah. And the Democrats didn't want to make cuts to the budget. Yeah. Because that's tough decisions. So they knew they could steal the rainy day fund. So they sat back mm -hmm. and then they said, hey, we got to touch the rainy day fund. We're broke. Mm -hmm. Leading no other conclusion. And we said this was going to happen and it did. My point being is we have $1.2 billion in the rainy day fund. If we get a recession, 2008 recession is now equivalent to the 29 crash. It's a yeah. one in a one hundred years event. It was big, and yeah. it was disastrous. We're probably not going to ever ever have a recession like that. Mm -hmm. But if we see it coming, all we have to do is change our budget to deal with it. And maybe we can't deal with all of it mm -hmm. by budget adjustments. But we still have one point two billion dollars, so yeah. we are safe. But the bottom line is, if it is true that transportation is the success of the state, mm -hmm. our plan preserves transportation. Their plan puts transportation at risk. So I would argue that our plan is better, not only for that, that their recession mm -hmm. will hurt them. If you do trucks, there's a lawsuit in Rhode Island that okay. says you can't do trucks. So they've tried something similar in Rhode Island. Right, and they got sued mm -hmm. uh, by the Truckers Association. The lower court, federal court said, we're going to dismiss the lawsuit mm -hmm. on the truckers because it's not a interstate commerce issue. It is a taxing issue. Okay. The truckers appealed that to the appellate court. That's where it is right now. So the merits of the case weren't decided. It's mm -hmm. what they call a venue issue. Okay. So that's out there. Now, if we put up tolls mm -hmm. for trucks and we'll get pulled into that lawsuit, so now yeah. we got to defend that lawsuit. If we lose, we have to pay back the truckers every dime mm -hmm. we got collected from them. And... We got our toll gantries that are costing us $75 million yeah. that we're going to have to eat. Or they're going to say, we have to make it constitutional. Mm -hmm. We got to toll cars. Now, if you saw Rhode Island come out the trucker thing and Rhode Island kind of win on that versus the truckers, would you feel more comfortable with that well, if, I think if the president that, was there? sort of, I, It would take that risk out of play. Yeah. I don't see that happening for four or five years. It would take that risk out of play. going to be an ongoing thing in Rhode Island for a while. Yeah, that. because if the... Uh, appeals court, who's got the case now, mm -hmm. says, no, the federal court can hear it. It's got to go back to the federal court. Then there's got to be briefing, arguments. Whoever wins will appeal it to the next court. If the uh, appeals court says, no, you can't bring this in federal court, yeah. then the truckers have got to bring it in state court. And then from state court, win or lose, they go to an appeal court. Yeah. And from that, they could go to the Rhode Island Supreme Court. So you're talking. So you're not getting any kind of answers no, on that anytime soon. No, and all you have to do is look at what recently happened with the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Governor Malloy and the Democratic majority put in some bill way back in the day that we're going to tax hospitals, but we're okay. going to give them the money back. And then when they got in a bunch of problems, they didn't give the back the money to the hospitals mm -hmm. as much as they were supposed to. The hospitals sued. Mm -hmm. We just settled the case the other day. Uh, we got briefed on it yesterday, so yep. I can't talk about the numbers. But what I will say is this. 
when we settled the case, yeah. it's because the hospital said, what you're doing is illegal. And if you don't stop it, yeah. we're going to sue you. And the Democratic majority, rather than cutting or changing the budget, they wanted the money. Yeah. They continued on this path, forcing the hospitals to sue. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that this settlement demonstrates we perhaps were not right in what we did. So the deal yeah. is structured to uh, give mon some money back to the hospitals mm -hmm. over time. Well, so they're doing it again. They're going into a trucking issue that they know there's liability out there, mm -hmm. and they're going to ignore the liability. And if it comes home to roost, you and I are going to pay for that liability yeah. and the rest of the people in the state. That's not a risk. I would suggest to you that's a strong risk. Yeah, until we, until we have the answers out of some of these other cases, it's it's... Right. Yeah. And why won't you do our plan? Is it because it's a Republican plan? Is it because yeah. Republicans can't have the answer to a transportation plan that yeah. doesn't have tolls? And I'm telling you, I think that's it. Yeah. It's the arrogancy of saying Republicans can't have the answer, period. Yeah. So we're not going to, we'll take a lot of your plan. Mm -hmm. And they're taking a lot of our plan. They're paying down pension liabilities. They're doing that. But they got to stick the tolls in. Yeah. Have to. So they want to stick the finger in our eye. They're sticking their finger in everybody's eye across mm -hmm. the state. And they're running a risk that their plan will fail if the economy falls. And they're running a risk that if the if they lose the trucker lawsuit, they're going to have to pay back the truckers. And they're running a risk that tolls for cars yeah. have to be the bailout. Well, there's a lot of issues there. I'd like to get one of the, one of the other side on to have hear their side on that one. I would too. Yeah, right? It would be a good conversation. Um so with this short legislative session coming up in 2020, uh, what are some of the Republican priorities that we can expect that we might uh, see that we haven't covered today so far? So quasis obviously are on mm -hmm. the list for us to get control of. Um, I think we have to have reinsurance for health insurance. Okay. Um, and what that is is a plan that uh, Senator Kevin Kelly is a very bright guy out of Stratford. He mm -hmm. worked for DSS for a long time. And then as a caseworker, and then he went to private practice and he does mm -hmm. elderly law. And he has a program of reinsurance where it, where the, uh, the premiums are rising. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we get a pool of money by the state okay. to help fund those who can't afford insurance. Mm -hmm. So we kind of self-insure, if you would, by giving uh, help in premiums. Mm -hmm. The price is about $20 million dollars a year, as I understand it, okay. that we need. And in a $19 billion budget, budget. Yeah, and it's kind of numbers you're talking about, that's not a huge. It's amount. not huge. Yeah. And Kevin Kelly came up with this last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democratic majority wouldn't even give Kevin Kelly a public hearing on this. Mm -hmm. Once again, why? Republicans can't have the answer. They just can't have the answer. So we're not going to give. So they went with a program, mm -hmm. which was akin to a single payer system. Yeah. And a program then they went with another program that a comptroller was going to run at the comptroller's office which I don't understand, okay. you know, which would be exempt from any mandates from the Affordable Care Act, which How's is How does that work? Well, it would be that we take it out of the insurance department, mm -hmm. we stick with the comptroller so it's not governed by those parameters. So some technicalities in some ways? Yes, yeah. and then he could pick the pool people could go in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bad idea of people, but they ran with it. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the state of Connecticut would run this. And they had a big press conference. Governor Lamont, Democrats, comptrollers stood there and said, this is the way to go. Okay. Kevin Kelly was telling them, you can't do this. One, Hartford is the insurance capital of the world. Yep. And what you're doing is you're saying that the state of Connecticut is going to compete in the health insurance field, With subsidized some... by taxpayers, yeah. which means they'll undercut everybody. And what would happen is this. The scenario would go out that the state of Connecticut would put out a health care plan mm -hmm. that's below everybody's health care plan yep. because we as taxpayers would subsidize it. Then once the field left, other Healthcare providers mm -hmm. picked up their stakes and left the state because they can't compete. You know, if I have a car dealership and you have a car dealership yeah. and I could sell my cars under cost, I'm going to run you out of business. Yeah. Now, as soon as you leave, I now have a monopoly. 
yeah. I come back and I could get premium for my yeah. car because you're gone. So that's what was going to happen. But you, so, but that would be the state running that then, right? Yeah. So in theory, they would have the, everyone's best interest in not raising those premiums. Is that the idea? Well, once they're gone, they could do whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. And I would argue that. But as opposed to being a for-profit business, it would be a government thing. So, in theory, it could keep the premiums low. In Wouldn't theory, it, it could to raise. Yeah, but you know, let's, to a, a let's look at what the let's look at government. If yeah. if they feel that they could raise the premiums and make money for our budget, so they could. Fund if history is an things, indication, yeah, that's the way yeah. to go. Yeah. Well, did you tell me anything that this state has gone down on in terms of taxes? Nothing. Mm -hmm. But they want to control the field, so they have this big press conference. No Republicans did that in the back room by themselves. No public hearing, okay. nothing. No public hearing. Two weeks before the end of session, they come out and do this big la -dee da pop champagne corks. Mm -hmm. They've got this answer. And one of the big insurance players in the state said, if you do that, we're leaving. We're leaving. That's not good. Full retreat. Full retreat. They said, we can't do this. We're done. Done. Okay. They go back to Kevin Kelly and say, hey, let's go do your plan. The one they wouldn't give a public hearing on, the one they didn't want to do, and there was like three days left of session. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't educate a building, even though it's a good plan. Yeah. You can't educate a building in three days, write it, get it done, get it through the get house. Get everybody, and everybody reads that's it, unfair. thinks about it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's just unfair. But that's the type of government I don't mm -hmm. like at the Capitol. Yeah. And that's the type of things that go on at the Capitol. You know, when we were 1818, the state Senate a few years ago, and close to the House, mm -hmm. we passed a really good budget, the only budget in the last 10 years that had a natural surplus without having a monkey around with mm -hmm. it. The only budget, you know, this year, this budget that was done by the Democrats is going to have a shortfall yeah. of about $32 million. We didn't have a shortfall. We had a surplus because it was honest budgeting. Mm -hmm. That's the way things should be done at the Capitol. Yeah. Once the Trump effect happened in Connecticut to many of my guys who were really mm -hmm. good senators who lost were incumbents. They ran with this and said, we don't need the minority party. We got this. You're done. We're running with this. Yeah. And what did we get? We got nothing done on transportation. I don't see anything happening before the end of the year. We've got a health care issue that still is a problem. Premiums are out of reach. Mm -hmm. Paid family leave that they got passed and they're rallying about, they admit, is not sustaining. Okay. It's going to go broke. We're going to take the money out of your pocket starting 2021. Mm -hmm. 5%, half a percent out of everybody's yeah. pocket is going into a fund for paid family leave. And in 2022, they're going to start it. Yeah. And they know they haven't done any actuarial figures, mm -hmm. so they don't know if it's going to work or not, but they know it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. But it's the most aggressive in the country, better, more aggressive than Washington, uh, state of Washington, more aggressive than Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go broke. And when I challenged the, the administration on this, they said, well, we're going to cut the benefits to people. We say okay. that in the plan. Can you imagine you lose a half a percent of your pay? Mm-hmm. And in 2023, you say, my mom's sick, my spouse is sick, my mm -hmm. kid's sick. I need to take off 12 weeks because I got to stay at home. Yeah. Sorry, six weeks. That's all you're going to get. Well, why? when I when you passed, it was 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that, but we only can afford six now. Yeah. So we're going to cut benefits after making, because we didn't do the actuarial analysis. Mm -hmm. It's another promise they can't keep. Yeah. And they're just setting it up for failure to either A, go and tax businesses at differential, mm -hmm. or B, tell people you're going to get less than your benefits. Yeah. How is that fair? How is that good government? I don't know. Did, was there a, a competing plan that you guys were pushing on the family yeah, leave? our competing yeah. plan was... And how would, how would you have dealt with some of those issues that you said were problems with, with the so, other plan? So our competing plan was let's uh, put into law to allow insurance companies to create that product. In mm -hmm. other words, they can only create a product that we sanction in the state of Connecticut. Insurance companies are not free to come in with any of their own products. Yeah. We so I said let's they said let's create a product mm -hmm. that gives the people just like healthcare the right to pick a plan that fits their needs. Mm -hmm. There may be people saying, I don't need twelve weeks off because you know what? My company gives me 
three weeks off. Okay. So if I get six weeks off plus a three weeks, nine is five. So we wanted to give insurance companies the right to create a, pro- a product mm-hmm. for which people can pay into. Okay. And maybe that's a half a percent of their salary. I don't know. But they could pay into and then they could the insurance companies can fit a model that fits the consumers because mm-hmm. they want to make money. So they're going to find a model that fits the consumers. Yeah. Just to give you an idea, I mean, this is, by the way, this model may or may not be run by the state, mm. but Metropolitan Life runs the health care model for uh, sick leave in New York City, and they're right here in Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. They're already geared up. They got the computer system. It's easy for them to put that product yeah. out there. But the Democrats wanted it to be, once again, a government-controlled plan. Mm. So once again, government is going to control you. They're going to tell you how it's going to operate. They're going to tr- control yeah. your lives. And you don't have the private industry involved. I think it's a mistake. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I may or may not be around in 2022. But I think when people go to see this and they say, oh, my gosh, we're broke, mm-hmm. there's going to be an outrage. And there isn't a person on that planet who's going to say, I'm cutting your benefits. Yeah, A lot of them are going to turn around and say, well, businesses have got to make up that difference. And then you're going to see businesses leave. Because a mom and pop business can't yeah. afford that. All right. Uh, anything else in the short session that you're focusing on that you're looking forward to? Um, I guess I'd like to see our transportation plan approve this special session. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to do that. Um, and I think, you know, we have to talk about people empowering people. I'd like to see us do more for our cities. I don't think we do mm-hmm. enough for our cities. And I like to see education change in our cities by giving people the opportunity of coming out of uh, our high schools who are not going to go to college, not because Mm -hmm. it's not their thing uh, or because it's not their thing, not because they're not smart enough or aptitude, but that they get somewhere uh, streamlining to get a certificate, whether it's Mm -hmm. for computers or technology. The the trade schools. Right. Bring all that back to our high schools. Mm -hmm. to a significant degree i think that's the failure of our high schools so i think that or i say with the state that are not helping high school so i think the strength of our state depends upon the strength of our cities Mm -hmm. and i think there's a lot of folks in hartford that take that vote for granted so they don't do anything except throw money at it and pat themselves on the back yeah well i hope we do fix some of that stuff i hope so too all right well i'd like to thank our guests state senator len fasano the Municipal Voice is a co-production by CCM and WNHH 103.5 FM. Kevin Maloney is our executive producer. Christopher Gilson is our producer. Harry draws is on the boards, and I'm Matt Ford, your host. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and give us a like, and watch out for our CCM chat series on our YouTube page. Just search for CCM chats, and you'll find them all in one convenient playlist. Thanks again for being here. Matt, thank you so much. I appreciate it.